It's been a while since I made a video, but um, first of all, before I get started, I'm, I will say that after I do this video, I'll continue on with the book of Revelation. Uh, what's going on is I feel like with my uh, YouTube channel that I feel like I need to go in the direction of testimony. You know, my whole life has been a testimony. Um, I have testimonies that I probably would not tell that I don't like to talk about because, but I've had a lot of experiences with the Lord and, um, you know, some of them are embarrassing testimonies. You know, there's times that the Lord had to correct me in my life that I wasn't exactly proud of. Um, there's times in my life, uh, there was a time that the Lord saved my life. I I know I would have died in a crash and um, but I did what he told me to do and because I did that my obedience I did not die in my sin let's put it that way so anyway there's been testimonies throughout my life as a Christian we should all have a testimony uh, the testimony of when we came to the Lord I mean even if you grew up in church you have to have a testimony. There has to be that moment where you really did come to know the Lord personally. That is your your uh, testimony, your Christian testimony. Now, after you have your experience with the Lord and you have a Christian testimony, your life should be filled with testimony. You know? testimony it testifies of Jesus Christ and we're to share that testimony share our testimonies with other people sometimes our testimonies can can help people in a crisis but all of our testimonies should lead people to the Lord or lead them to go his direction if they need help with something but all of our testimonies are given to us by God for a reason and so I'm going to give you a very recent testimony now. I have them all the time, but I feel like all of a sudden that that is the direction that this um, channel needs to take. I need to get into testimony. I won't be getting into scripture in this testimony. It's going to be a little bit long, I think, but um, I think that's the direction. Now, I am going to complete the book of Revelation. I will get into Revelation 10 after this video I'll continue on in that series I'm going to take us all the way to the end of Revelation but for right now also I believe that I'm to be giving testimonies and hopefully they will help you and if they do help you please make a comment down below and let me know that they have helped you in some way um, anyway people I'm getting into my testimony now now people um that know me uh, they know me and my husband um, they know I I'm uh, I'm a planner by nature I live by a list I'm fairly organized I gotta know what I'm doing you know I'm not one of these people that can just spontaneously take a trip somewhere say you know it could be a trip down into Mexico you know for a weekend I'm not somebody that could just go down there and not know where I'm going to stay, what I'm going to do, exactly uh, what my surroundings are going to be. I need to know these things, you know. I'm not a person that's spontaneous. I can't just get up and go. I live my life by a set of lists. I am the list person. I, you know, I make a list every day, you know, like 10 things I want to get done in a day. If I only get five or six of them done, I'm okay with that. At least I got a list and I have something I can follow. Um, the last 10, okay, I've, <laughs> I, the last 10 years, I've been self-employed now 18 years. But, um, and I have worked since I was 16 years old, I have always held employment. I've always had to hold employment, okay? But the last 18 years, I've been self-employed. And um, anyway, I forgot where I was going with that. Oh, my gosh, getting old. Oh, so <laughs> anyway, 
But I've always had jobs where I've got to be organized, you know. In my last 10 years, the last decade, um, when I was working for The Man, um, I was a production planner. I mean, everything, I like order, you know. If everything's a mess around me, I can't function. Like, like my brain would go numb. I need to know what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. I need to be able to do it. Okay. So anyway, my husband and I, we have been, uh, both of us, working together, side by side, self-employed, uh, the last 10 years, okay? Um, before that, I had a studio, um, a place of business, and now I'm, um, essentially, I guess I'm working from home, even though I'm not, <laughs> But anyway, the last decade we've been doing what we do, and I don't want to get into a whole lot of detail, but uh, my husband and I were opposite, you know. I can't, I can't function <coughs> in chaos. My husband, he can think on his feet. Chaos doesn't matter. I gotta be organized. Tim, eh, who cares, you know, doesn't care about organization. You know, I, I, I live by a list. Him, eh, whatever happens today when I wake up, if I get it done, great, you know. So, we're very opposite like that. Likewise, when it comes to um, the opposite happening, he's the one that, hey, he can function. And that is the downside for me. Because I have to have things a certain way. I have to know what I'm doing. For instance, uh, let's, for an example, let's just say that, you know, because we work on the road. We're on the road a lot. Uh, we are um, art therapy, and we work with developmentally disabled, okay? So we're on the road a lot. We're going the distance. We're going to the clients, okay? And so this is what we do. And a lot of times, we're on the road, like five days a week. I mean, we're home every night, but... A typical day would be working three hours with clients, but two and two and a half hour drive there, two and a half hour drive back. If there's an accident and I'm in the uh, the Golden State over here, so that means if there's an accident, a train wreck, a fire, all these things that happen all the time, that two and a half hour drive is going to be a three and a half or a four hour drive, one way. That's just the nature, how it goes. So we're on the road a lot, so if we're doing a five-day week, I got a meal prep for the week. I make lunches, we don't eat on the road. When we come home, we eat dinner, okay? We don't go out to eat. So I have to, I have to budget myself because being self-employed in the business that we're in, um, we have to be very budgeted. You know, and I, I would not trade that to go back into the regular career work world again. I uh, That's the trade-off, okay? I don't need the extra money. Just got to budget myself. So, anyway, I will make plans for the week meal prep. So, I'll put the day aside. Like, I'll say Saturday or Sunday, I meal prep for the week. All right. So, anyway, let's say I got a list where I'm going to go grocery shopping and then I'm going to meal prep, and then I got something else, okay? I've got my list. I know what I'm doing, and I know that this is going to take me all day. I get a phone call. It's a friend. Haven't seen in a long time. Hey, I flew in. I've only got a couple hours. Let's go meet at, let's go, go to Starbucks. Let's go meet for a coffee. Ah, you know, I am going to go see my friend. I'm not going to not do it. This is just an example. Okay, so I'm going to head down there and I'm going to go see my friend, but that just pulled the carpet out from underneath what I was doing. Now, I'm the type of person that got a plan B. I always got a plan B. So, okay, now I'm going to work this out around that. I'm just going to have to do my grocery shopping in a different area and da 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 you know. But there are times where something comes up and whoosh, just pulls the rug out from under me. And when it does, I can't, that's the bad downside is that I just, my, it's like somebody blew hot air into my head and sucked out all thoughts. I don't know what to do, deer in the headlights. You know, I'm not good at when my plans don't come together. It's just not a natural thing for me. That's the downside. Okay, 
So now, let me get to the testimony. My husband and I were on the road, as I said. We work, you know, we work maybe three weeks. We do, let's see, we do between eight and ten events a month. That's typical, okay? We rotate like 47 events, um, no, 47 facilities throughout the year, but we do, like I said, between eight and ten events a month. All right, so I'm not going to get into too much detail, but because um, this isn't about me. This is a testimony. Um, it took us ten years ago when we began doing what we're doing. This was very God-given. I didn't even know that uh, the industry that we're in was as vast as it was. I had, you know, one phone call literally changed our lives. It began as a side job and then ended up be, becoming our, our job job. And so um, this is mainly what we do. This is what pays our bills. This is what, you know, this is our income. Likewise, I know this came from the Lord. It's got his signature all over it in many different ways. And so, likewise, I, I do have a little side business. I mean, I sell on eBay. I've got a store on there. Had that for a couple of years. Before that, I've had other stores. So, I, uh, but that's not a priority. That takes the back seat because what the Lord gave me to do, that is my priority. And it has blossomed into our what we do for a living okay so anyway pretty much almost every day of the week I acknowledge that this came from the Lord I would never take credit for what we do okay we work with uh, developmentally disabled adults okay and uh, I would never take credit for that I mean, I, if somebody had told me what I would be doing at this point in life, I would never have believed it. I'd be like, no, you know, I've never had anything to do with this before. I mean, this is years ago. So we've built up a customer base over time. I have never had anyone on my customer base ever say, okay, we're done with your service, we don't need you anymore. I've never had that happen, and we've been doing this 10 years. There are accounts that took us three, four years of calls, going out there, showing what we do, you know, all these things in order to obtain that account. So over time, this has built up. All right, so now, this year, at the beginning of this year, 2017, I thought, okay, great, you know, we got a couple of events that we do, book an extra one during the year. And I thought, oh, wow, you know, this will be a good, good thing for us. Also, mind you, the industry that we're in um, is a dead industry. Okay, it's like my supplier. I'm one of the top 10 purchasers of my supplier. That scares me because I'm in an industry that was big in the 70s, uh, falling off and in the 80s, gave its last hurrah in the 90s, but now in the millennial uh, period of time, it's dead industry. You know, we live in a very fast food world. People do not care about art. They just don't care unless it's something that's, you know, unheard of or something terribly unique. Okay, so <laughs> anyway, um, we, anyway, I always, I always acknowledge that the Lord gave this to us. Whenever somebody asks us what we do for a living and I tell them, I always make sure I mention the Lord God gave it to us. I, I'm not smart enough to come up with this on my own. Didn't even know there was a, um, that there was any type of um, market for what we do. Okay? So, anyway, we had gotten a couple of things. And then come about July, 
Okay, mind you, as you can tell on my videos, I was leaving to go on vacation end of August, and um, actually it was during, I was on vacation during the time that all those hurricanes were hitting Florida, and that's when I took a two-week vacation. All right, which I plan way in advance, months in advance before I buy my tickets. I just go visit my family uh, once a year. I've been doing that maybe the last three or four years. Okay, so, or yeah, okay, about four times now. So anyway, um, come July, we um, everything's going good, and uh, we get a call. We we're calling. We always call the night before we go out to an event just to make sure that we're still on calendar because you know we're driving two and a half hours away so we always call ahead however when my husband made the calls and called uh we found out that this other company that we do for okay all these events we do some of them we do once a year some we do twice a year some of them we do quarterly some of them we do every other month okay everybody's different they're on different schedules different times and uh, we usually mark the date every, every month of every year we know what we're doing <coughs> it's the same but uh, we usually schedule a couple months out as to which date that we're going out to do an, an, um, an activity so anyway my uh, husband calls this other company that we do quarterly four times a year and they said oh we uh, they had just canned their new um, director and they said we got budget issues and uh, right now we're just not going to be doing anything like that oh my gosh okay so that was a little bit shocking because I'm thinking wait a minute we do you know between 8 to 10 average uh, events a month and this just knocked out four events out of the year right there that quick and I'm like wow okay well all right <laughs> you know um, I will survive you know not bad we booked a couple extra things this year so we'll we can ride the store um, the following week we go and do a rather large event it's one of our larger accounts we go out we do the event we process their art and when we're bringing it back they tell my husband in the office new director came in another new director came in uh, an area director to clean house because the budgets upside down and uh, they're going to scale us back from quarterly to once a year. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's seven events a year now, you know. <laughs> in, in like a week, all this happened. Seven events. That's almost a month's worth of events. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, so okay, I was a little shaken by this. Because like me, I, I, you know, I don't like changes like that. All right, right after that, we are going to an event. We're doing an event about another week later. I mean, now we're getting into August. We go do an event, and um, normally we go in, we do, this is actually two groups in one that we're doing. And we usually go two hours earlier so that the one group can come in-house and we work with them and they leave. And then two hours later, the usual group comes in and we do that. This is a once a year event. Okay. So, um, anyway, um, we get there two hours early. I mean, we've already confirmed this on the phone. This is what we do every year. Now, this group, we've been doing 10 years. So we get in, we're set up, come to find out, the director comes in and says that the new area director told him that we're not going to do the first group now. We're cutting them out. 
And so here we are. We had to get up at four in the morning to be there. We're two, we got two hours to just sit there and do nothing. Nobody told us this all happened that morning. Okay, so now we're sitting back. We've now lost another group every year. That's eight groups, eight groups. That is a month of our income gone it's gone that's eight groups okay so now if we get through that I'm I'm like my head's spinning okay this this I'm used to my business increasing I'm not used to it decreasing okay and I'm like Lord what's going on what's going on you know what what are we doing something wrong you know okay so now we're at eight events we're no longer doing all right now now what happens that same area director another direction another area okay my husband's calling because the following week oh, we're supposed to go out and do an event and um, he says nope I came in new budget issues uh, we're gonna have to cancel you guys indefinitely another that was a quarterly that's 12 that is 12 events a year okay we're talking like almost a month and a half of income done okay 12 events that's a lot for us okay so now <laughs> this just kept happening and these were different some were the same area director this particular area director was new he's worried about numbers he does not care about benefit to his clients he does not care about that he's a bean counter and he wants to look real good now that he's come in he wants to show off how he can cut all these unnecessary things I mean that's what was going on and I'm like pan I'm telling my husband what am I gonna do by this point 12 events a year I'm thinking do I just start you know really working my eBay is this what I need to do I mean do I what do I do do I go maybe I should start going back to school you know I'm thinking all these things and um, really starting to panic I mean my head is spinning because you know there is no plan B except to go out there and find more business it took us 10 years to build where we are okay and of course the Lord helped us to build this business he gave it to us but I'm not thinking about that I'm thinking what am I gonna do to fix this I can't you know I'm a think ahead person I, I'm not one to sit back and watch my house of cards fall you know fall to the ground I need to do something I mean panic I'm like by this point I'm thinking to myself do I even go on vacation you know because that's just another expense I don't need and uh, so anyway you know my husband he's the opposite of me he's like don't worry about it things are changing I'm like that's easy for you to say you're not the one working our budget okay we are very budgeted people um, okay so now all right it's coming up to vacation time I had a week before I'm leaving I'm already shook up about all the jobs we left like every day I'm thinking about this like my gosh it's not supposed to go backwards it's supposed to go forwards you know and so um, I'm really upset we go to do an event this is like the last event I'm gonna do uh, before I leave and go out of town um, that was a two-hour drive now this particular event that we do is six times a year this is a bi-monthly event uh, the director there has never uh, been fair with us um, when we came in it was under the direction of another area director over her who brought us in and she has been disinterested in us like we are a uh, what do you call it like we're an inconvenience to her since day one this was ten years ago this was one of the first sets of groups we ever did so as you can imagine I mean she's been very rude with us but you have to you can't in this industry I mean when you're self-employed and you're building a business you can't uh, for instance we go out there and we do a particular art with uh, the clients 
she would be sending the people out the door to go somewhere else to do it while we're setting up to do it. This is the type of stuff we were putting up with. This is a person that had no regard for us whatsoever. She'd smile, how you doing? But she was so disinterested, I bet you anything, she really didn't even know what we did when we were there. I mean, she would sit in her office and just, we were never, we never got the warm fuzzy, you know, she never rolled out the red carpet for us. So it was always a very difficult thing. And no matter what we did, we could never do exactly what she wanted. We couldn't get there early enough. Well, you need to be here, you know. So we would get up in the middle of the night, because, you know, two hour drive and get there. And she would still be sending people out the door. You know, it just was not, it was a dislike for us as people, I think. I don't know, I really don't know. So anyway, we go out there to do this event um, before, you know, this is like the last event we're doing before I'm leaving in a week. So we get out there. Uh, by the end, my husband says, I got to tell you something. You know, we're packing up to leave. And he says, um, yeah, I was called in so-and-so's office. And she told me that the clients are no longer interested in what we do. So she, that we won't be coming back. I'm like, what? Okay, mind you, I'm already 12 events gone. And now you want to add six more. That is 18 events. 18 events. That is, that is two months of income. I mean, that will hit you hard. Think even in, in terms of your life, you know, what if the job you go to every day, if, if you are full-time employed and you're relying on that income, you found out you were only going to get paid 10 months out of the year, not 12. That's exactly what happened to us. 18 events. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, if they told you you were only going to get paid for 10 months, two months, two months of no income. I'm not kidding. That's how much we were cut. That's quite a bit considering we don't, it's not like I'm a public speaker and I make my money. I have overhead. I have to pay for uh, the art that we're doing. I have suppliers. I, I have overhead, okay? So it's not like um, I just go out and make money and that's my income. Okay, it is my income, but it's not, you know, I have overhead. I have taxation. I have a lot of things that I have to deal with. So 18 events, my head was spinning. I'm like, I came so close, really, to not even taking my vacation. But I, I, I sucked it up and I went. Okay, so I, I'm just like, what are we doing, you know? And then my, I'm, I'm juggling back and forth. I'm between, okay, um... Lord, uh, you know, what are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? I'm, I'm, I'm upset. Lord, you're, you're not helping us here, you know? And, uh, and, uh, and then on the other side of that, I'm like, okay, what can I do? Do I go back to college? Do I, um, what do I do? Do I get employment somewhere? I mean, at the, at the rate that it, these jobs are coming done, I ain't going to have anything in a month, you know? So here we had all, we had all this going on. And so, um, I did take my vacation, and uh, like I said, it was during the time that all those hurt. I didn't go to Florida, thank goodness, but it was during that time. I was on my two-week vacation. You can see on my website when I was going on vacation. And uh, I, like, I had to shrug it. I had to not think about it on my trip. So, I did that, and then I came back, and... Um, I had to hit the ground running because I had taken, I had a week off before I took my trip and then two weeks off. That was a lot of weeks for me. So I came back, my husband and I had to hit the ground running and lo and behold, the next event we do, two and a half hour drive. This particular one took us like three years to get this account after a couple of two and a half hour drives out there to present what we do. And I mean, three years it took us to get this account. And I have another testimony about what happened prior to getting this account, but I don't want to get sidetracked here. 
So here we are, we go out. Now, this particular event is two events under one roof, only we do one one month, one another month, okay? So it, they're both quarterly. Okay, so, you know, um, I don't, we don't do them at the same time. We go out, we do one event, and then the following month when we come out to do the other one, we return the art that was made from the first event. You see what I'm saying? And, but both offices are under the same roof. We're not doing the event at the same location. There are two different locations, but the office is same roof. So we're out there to do this event, and the uh, director comes up to us and says, yeah, okay, the area director called me a um, couple weeks ago. Okay, the area director he's talking about is the bean counter that's been cutting us, okay, from anything to do with his area. He said, we, I got a call from him, and he told us to get on the phone and call other companies that are local uh, to see if we can find somebody cheaper because he wants to replace you guys. And we're like, huh? I, I mean, I'm telling you, I thought my heart was going to beat out of my chest. Here I am, we're 18 events. I just took a, va I took a vacation that I really didn't even think I should have taken. I come back, and here we are again. I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I couldn't even talk. I'm just like tripping over my words. Oh, blah, blah. You know, and my husband, he's like, so what happened? And, and he said, well, we called. Um, there were a few places. We called around. And we had to call him back. We said, you guys got the best pricing, and you guys come to us. Nobody else is going to come to us. And my husband's like, good, good. And I'm like, I don't care. You know, my heart is just sinking and sinking. Oh, my gosh. We're going we're gonna to just, I'm going to be living in a cardboard box by the end of the year. I'm going to lose my home. I'm going to lose everything. I'm just like, my whole life is flashing before my eyes. So then, because the other office is in that office, my husband goes over to the gal that's the director for the other group out there to ask her, is that true? And she says, yeah, it's true. He called me too. She goes, I had to make phone calls. And she said, but I called him back because I can't find nobody. And besides that, you guys know our clients and you guys come to us. Nobody's going to do what you guys do. And... And then my husband comes back. He tells me after we've packed up, we're leaving. He tells me, yeah, you know, he called her too. You realize how many, those are two quarterly events. That would have been eight more events. That would have brought me to 26, wait a minute, 18. 26, yeah, 26 events gone. Okay, if, we're, if eight to 10 events a month, that's our average that we do. That would have been almost two and a half months of our income. Wait a minute. Yeah, that would have been about two, two and a half, um, almost three months of income. Okay? That's what I'm saying. But they vouched for us, and they, they found that we were, <laughs> we were, um, we were the better choice, I guess. So anyway, we left there. And I, I mean, by now, you know, I'm see, my life is flashing before my eyes. I'm like, everything, um, everything that we have worked hard to build is gone. It's going, you know. At some point, at one point, when we start losing income, do we go back to the work world and, and we have to close down what we do, you know. I mean, if it gets bad enough, we got to do something. I am a planner. I can't, I can't sit back until I'm drowning in quicksand. That's just not me. My husband, he's still like, don't worry about it. We're good. We know what we do. He's still. But I could tell by this point, there's a little bit working on him too. Because, I mean, he, um, up until this point, he's been like my cheerleader going, oh, no, we're fine, you know. It's just something different's going to come along, you know. He's, he's one of those. And then here we are. We're, I'm just like, then my whole world's crashing in front of me, okay. And I'm like, 
something's going on. This is not normal. We have done this 10 years. I've never had one account do this. And you got to understand, for 18 accounts to be gone, potentially 26 of them, this is not good. This is like almost three months of income here. I'm not kidding you. Okay, so I'm like, um, my head is just spinning all the way home. I, I had him, I, I was like, stop at a store. I went and bought like a half carton, a half gallon, not even Ben and Jerry size. I went and got the half gallon size uh, chocolate moose tracks ice cream, man. I don't even like eating that stuff, but here I, I'm just like, yum, 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 all the way, all the way back. I'm like, I don't care. I, I'm, I'm stressed. I'm stressed, you know, and I, I just like, I was panicked. I, I just was panicked. So we get back home, and I mean, I, my head's spinning. I'm like, okay, at what point do I got to do something else? I have to do something else. This thing is, is spiraling out of control so fast on me. I got to do something. Well, uh, it wasn't too long after that, maybe about a week. Um, we're sitting down, we're eating dinner, we're at the kitchen table, and bam, it hits me. I made a declaration right there. It hit me right there. I always, always give the Lord credit for having given me this business having given us this business but never once did I think during this whole thing spiraling out of control never once did I think that it was the Lord shutting doors that it was the Lord I kept accrediting this to the area directors and this this one doesn't like us this one okay I understand one of them had a budget issue okay I get that you know, and then there was another one, and then there was the bean counter guy that, um, okay, he's taking them away from us. And I'm looking at everybody else who is, who is dismantling our business as though they have the power to do that. Now, it occurs to me now, finally, you know, when the Lord opens a door, no man can shut it. And when the Lord shuts a door, no man can open it. And it hit me. And I told my husband, I said, you know what? I said, what's really interesting is that if the Lord gave this to us, it's only the Lord that can take it away. It's got to be the Lord taking these jobs from us. It has to be. And if it's part of his will, Maybe he wants us to sell our home and move away. We can't do that while we're working this job. It's not like we can just relocate to another state. You know, we're kind of bound where we're at. And I thought, well, you know what? So be it. If the Lord's taken it, he's the only one that can take it from us. These people wouldn't be shutting us down if the Lord didn't allow it. This is unusual. This is not, this is how, and, and the reason why I'm giving you this testimony is because you can usually tell when things are happening that are not in the ordinary. Okay. I mean, if this was sporadically happening, okay. But I'm talking every week. Boom, boom, boom. Seem like every week. Something's gone. Something's gone. Another week, another week, another week. You know, this was perpetual. This wasn't, this was very out of the ordinary for us. And um, I had to recognize it is the Lord that gives, it's the Lord that takes away. I'm not going to stress it. I'm not going to dive into some other job. I'm not going back to school. I'm recognizing it for what it is. If the Lord's taking it, it's for a reason. And I'm going to accept it. And that's what I said. I did. I declared that. I really did. We were sitting at the table at dinner time when I finally came to the right conclusion. God got my attention finally. I have to wonder if I didn't come to that conclusion how many more jobs I would have lost. Okay, seriously. We got done with dinner. My husband goes back to his, his computer. He's going through emails and there's an email in there. And it ends up um, that we were recommended by someone 
to another company and the woman was not only sold on having us out there she didn't even want to meet she was like no let's book this she wrote a letter to us in our email and said I want to do this right now and I want you guys to come out every month which may be excessive I don't know but we're talking like 12 events in fact she scheduled us we've done it twice already she's like scheduled us like right away she wanted us to come as quickly as we could we we fit it into the schedule and then and then she had us come out the next month she wants us monthly not only that but when we went out to do that event she called another director from her company there is one other place uh, in the area of, of anyway you wouldn't understand but in the same area where we had lost the six times a year account and uh, we're gonna be doing that one monthly that's another that's 24 events that night that night 12 and then within a couple of weeks 24 events a year that the Lord replaced from what was gone now the reason why that I'm telling you this this isn't about money this isn't about that I mean this is about you know first of all this is about going into a wilderness there are times in my life there was one time in my life where the Lord chastised me really bad and uh, how long you stay in that state is um, all depends on you <laughs> You know, because the Lord puts us through a refining process, okay? How long you stay in that state depends on your actions. If you yield yourself to God, it doesn't go any further. But until you get to that point of yielding yourself to the Lord, when He is refining you, more and more stuff's going to happen. You're going to go deeper into the wilderness. I thank God that I was only in it a few months. I can only imagine, you know. I mean, if this had happened 12 years ago, I would have lost every account before I got to the point of realizing it was the Lord that giveth and the Lord that taketh away. We always think about the Lord giving, but we never think about the Lord taking away. We always like to attribute it to the devil. The devil takes everything from us. Okay, that's kind of how my thinking was, you know. Um, I'm losing these accounts because the devil's out to get me, you know. And you start thinking stuff like that. I mean, I didn't stay there. I mean, I, I was like, you know, thinking, oh, you know, this person's a bean counter. They don't care. This person, she never liked us. This person, you know, doesn't even know us. And, you know, and I'm going through all this. But really, ultimately, it's the Lord that puts things in people's minds and in their hearts. You know, even people that are not of the Lord, he, they still act for him. They do. They just don't know it. You know, the Lord can take an unsaved person and cause them to feel a certain way or think or do a certain thing. He does do that. I know he does that. So, in this case, doors started shutting until the Lord got my attention and I recognized what it was. Okay? Once I recognized it, I, I always acknowledged the Lord gave this to us, but I never took the time to acknowledge it would be Him that's taking it away. And once I finally came to the right conclusion and the Lord had my attention, He gave back. I'm telling you, he did. I know he did. And so, if you're going through a time, and it seems like some weird stuff's going on, like you have um, everything, you know, something in your life that, that's always been a certain way, and now all of a sudden it looks like doors are closing, or, or people are changing, or you know whatever it is you know maybe you've been at a job where you have worked overtime for the last 20 years and now all of a sudden you know they've scaled you back to a part-time person you know look to the Lord because maybe the Lord's doing it and maybe he's doing it for a reason it's not always the devil out to get you that is is changing your circumstance sometimes it's because you are not giving the right attention or acknowledgement 
as far as the Lord is concerned. You know, I should have right away when that first account went acknowledged, you know what? The Lord may have taken that job from us for a reason. Instead of doing that, I went into panic mode. I mean, right away. I could, I, first it was shock, then panic, then then my mind raced, oh my gosh, I got to do this, I got to do that. Well, how come I'm going to do it? I didn't start this business to begin with. It was the Lord. The Lord gave this to me. He led me into what we do. I didn't even know existed. Okay? So why would it be any different? Man cannot shut a door that the Lord opens. If that door is shutting you got to go to the Lord on it. you got to ask him why. What is it? You know, I wasn't full-heartedly looking at it as the Lord doing it. So anyway, I don't want to be redundant here. But um, this can apply to different areas. This doesn't have to be finances. This could be relationships. This could be friendships. Maybe you've hung with a certain crowd. And now the Lord is taking them out of your life. Seriously, we're in the end of days. The Lord is making adjustments on his people. He is making adjustments. Um, he needs you to have your attention on him. He needs you to be operating in his will. He needs you to acknowledge him in all things. And this was just one of them for me. So if you've got some crazy thing going on, don't just assume the devil's doing it. If you are a child of the living God, you need to look at him. Maybe there's a reason why he's doing it. And the sooner you acknowledge it, the sooner you can be removed from that place. Okay, a lot of this is refining. We're going through a time of refinement. We're seeing a separation of wheat and tares. That's what's going on. You're seeing it. You're seeing it. This is why people's attitudes are getting real stinky. You're starting to see things in people that you never knew before. I mean, I'm even seeing it. People we know, I am seeing the demonic in people we know. Nice people that we know. I'm starting to see things that are shocking to me. And I know it's a spirit on the person. But I never noticed these things before. Either I haven't noticed them before or um, or these things have are manifesting themselves in people. I, I'm noticing it just in the last week, uh, Thanksgiving. You know, there's there's a lot of strange things going on, and so if you're noticing something different in your life, um, you might want to find out. Maybe the Lord's trying to get your attention, get your attention off what you're doing. You know, we always need to be in tune to that. And, you know, now I wish I would have had my attention a whole lot sooner than a few months. I wish right away I would have made that acknowledgement. You know, I mean, who knows? Maybe we would, would not have lost all the accounts that we did. But uh, I, I'm thankful it didn't take me 10 months or a year or three years to figure this out. I wouldn't be. <laughs> I'd be in a cardboard box in a year. So um, I'm thankful. I'm very thankful. And I hope that this video helped you. If it did, please put something down below. Um, if there's something in, you know, maybe, maybe this is going on in your life. Um, anyway, I'm going to close this video out for now. I'm going to do another video. We're going to get into Revelation 10. I am going to finish Revelation, but I'm going to be doing a lot of testimonial videos because our lives must have constant testimony in them. If you don't see God moving in your life or working in your life, you got to sit back. Now, maybe he is and you're not recognizing it. That, that can also be, you know, I guarantee there are a lot of things God has done in all of our lives that we did not recognize. A lot of times we'll get to a point in life, we'll look back and we'll say, you know what, the Lord was doing this, that, and the other, and I didn't even realize it. Well, that's what's going on, you know, this goes on in everybody's lives. And um, we want to recognize these things. We want to know. We want to see a move of God in our life. If our life is just stagnant and there's nothing happening at all, um, 
you know, we need to find out why. And uh, maybe perhaps God is working in our lives and we're just not paying attention. Anyway, I hope you have a good day or a good night. We're nighttime here. And I'm going to do Revelation 10 on the other side of this video. Be blessed.